Alright, Good evening. Looking at the Lama Chopa, we at this section where we, um, as we see on page eight, one makes praises and requests. And before one makes, um, or in order to make praises and requests, the first section was recalling um, the kindness of our, our Lama. And one does so uh, through the, or sorry, the first section was recalling his great qualities. And thereafter, the second section where we are now is recalling his kindness. And the purpose for recalling his kindness is it, it serves as a basis for us to generate strong and stable faith in him. And the purpose or the reason one needs faith is because the purpose of the Buddha Dharma is for us to be able to change or transform our minds, transform our way of thinking in order to develop ourselves to attain a state of lasting happiness. And for that to come about, we need to be open and receptive, trusting and with conviction in our teacher so that his guidance penetrates us and enables us to transform our way of thinking. So this is why faith is the, an indispensable foundation and it arises through re recalling the qualities and the kindness of our Lama. Last week, we uh, looked at the first verse, uh, recalling the kindness of our teacher and spoke in depth about the need to develop faith in our teacher. And in it, that I want to Lamalia Deva Cheva Deva Cheva Ina, and then Sangi Tamjela Deva Cheva Deva Chibigi, Payan to Gores, Sangi Tamjela Deva Cheva, the Jiba Chagores, Lamal Chuba Puena, and the Sangi Tamjela Chuba Puigi, and the Susaki was Agores. Generating faith in one's Lama is the same as generating faith in all the Buddhas. Making offerings, therefore, to one's Lama is the same as making offerings to all the Buddhas. Lamale <laughs> The reasons that establish that having faith in the Lama is, having, uh, the, uh, is the same as having faith in all the Buddhas and making offerings to one's Lama is the same as making offerings to all the Buddhas, is that one imagines all the Buddhas dissolving into one's Lama, the, the, the body or the bodies of the, all the Buddhas dissolving into the body of one's Lama and thereby he embodies all the Buddhas. And therefore, when one, for example, makes offerings to him, it is as if one were making offerings to all the Buddhas as he now embodies them. And Jinya Jugi Sangilia and 
Sangela and the Nuba Yores, and Chamba Yores, Zawa Yores, and Janet Zawa Yores, Nuba Yores, and the Gang to Juba and the Tribic Nuba Yor or Tunib and Nuba Yungores. Tis a Dineza, and Sangiegi, Corongich, Church, Sunje, then Aranzo Rubich in the Mikuma Rubicina, Chichia Sane, and Aranzogi, a good Mount Benine, and the Corn Jang and Jan Madame Aranzo Mune, Chetua Skyo Marawa. Marazumini, <laughs> Ganesh Pando Yonya Chig Lob John Jala Pando Ganesh Yon Sara Sam Big Gongwa Shi and then Tamegi number number two and chair, Tamebi Nambigi, Mikumi number two, and Delma and Shanlia and Che Shiata and this young gurias. Just that didn't answer that you get lama, tangan to get lama chipping yam lichik the lama y them sang you some more ye medu, that in a gongu wenza, chis and so you get lama tiang, and the sang yegi answolia. え、次、中枢に端到了。だから、三月公務所、中途病、まあ、超級中級、ジェーキ、そのメンバーで中途病、まあ、メンバーさんだ、三月期、あの、ため、ビン、ゲビシン、ナンバー2、ジェ、あの
Throughout the, the ages, ordinary beings have written texts with a motivation to benefit others. The text could be on any number of subjects, but they wrote this with a wish to benefit others. And perhaps even that text they shared with others in their lifetime, taught it to others in their lifetime. But no matter how good their motivation or how um, artful they are in composing a text, or how beneficial the text may be, when their life ends, their ability to sh uh, propagate that text that they compose with a, a good motivation, that ability ends. A Buddha, though, is not an ordinary being at all. A Buddha is not limited like we are limited. Buddha Shakyamuni appeared in this world, taught the complete and unmistaken method to students. They then, in turn, gained realization of that in that lifetime. And as more and more beings became Buddhas, they continued to teach lifetime after lifetime in a whole variety of forms the complete and unmistaken method to beings. So this is vastly different for ourselves. We can compose a book with a good intention, but beyond this life, we can't help beings through what we have composed. But a Buddha, knowing that their teaching is of greatest value, will ensure that beings throughout the world and throughout time are benefited by those teachings. And this is because of the Buddha's incomparable qualities. The Buddha is not limited like we are. <laughs> Chikisanye, these reasons have been these two reasons I've just presented tie in with what we looked at last week. When we looked at the first verse in the section, verse 46, recalling the kindness of our lamas, recollecting that we didn't have the a sufficient merit to meet Buddha Shakyamuni directly. And despite that lack of merit, our, our Lama has appeared before us in a way that we can interact with, that we can have um, our interaction with and receive benefit from. So we looked at that in the preceding verse, and we see how it links to the description I've just given, that the, the Buddhas will always be there to help ordering beings in the most suitable of ways. And reflecting on this, we generate faith in our teacher. This brings us then to the 47th verse on page 8. When, because of the times, the sun of the conqueror sets, you enact the deeds of a conqueror for the many migrators who lack a saviour refuge, compassionate refuge saviour, 
I make requests to you. The first line, we see how it links to that preceding verse, when because of the times the sun of the conqueror sets. So here, we were recalling in the preceding verse that we didn't have the merit to meet Buddha Shakyamuni directly and receive uh, complete and unmistaken teachings from him directly. But yet, but despite this, we are not bereft of fortune. His emanation, his representative, amongst his emanations and representative in this world, we have met and come under the care of our Lama, his representative, his emanation in this world. Tubasanjumdeni, And First word in Tibetan um, is the word conqueror. Here, the conqueror, uh, we can see it's in an up, uh, written with uppercase, so it refers to Buddha Shakyamuni. So, Buddha Shakyamuni. He appeared in the world 2,600 years ago, and he taught so many beings. And amongst these, the stu uh, the, his students who had the merit to be present in his lifetime, so many became arhats and even, even Buddhas. And it, but eventually, the, the merit to sustain a real turning Buddha in this world, this drew to an end. And the Buddha entered into Parinirvana, giving the last lesson of his life showing impermanence. But because of the, uh, the teachings that he had been given, leading to such realization in, in his students, the, the lineage of his teachings was able to continue unbroken in the world. First, there were many great uh, masters in ancient India. Later, Nagarjuna uh, revitalized the Mahayana or uh, re-established, bringing to the fore the, the Mahayana. And there are many other great lamas at, in, in ancient India too. And then the, the, the Mahayana spread from northern India 
through the Himalayas into Tibet, being brought there uh, later by Atisha, revitalized by Atisha. And then the other schools of Tibetan Buddhism were established. First, prior to Atisha, there was the Nigma school, and thereafter later, and, and then the Kagyu and the Sakya, and then later the Geluk. And from those ancient times, still from now, uh, well more, uh, one and a half thousand years ago, to now, the lineage has remained unbroken. Being unbroken means that the teachings were taught in a complete and unmistaken way and realized, actualized within beings. And between then and now, so many beings, again, have become Buddhas. So in this way, the lineage has stayed alive and vibrant from the time of Buddha Shakyamuni to our present, present day. Andine Gansadigan, Desolate to be amongst the, the entourage or the audience of a wheel-turning Buddha such as Buddha Shakyamuni, students need a remarkable amount of merit. And due to having such merit, so many of them quickly entered, uh, uh, attained a path, progressed through the paths, and achieve the result of their path. Again, whether that of being an arhat, becoming an arhat, or a, or a Buddha. Eventually, as I mentioned, Buddha Shakyamuni uh, passed from this world, but the lineage stayed alive. And then some centuries later, Nag Nagarjuna appeared in this world and re revitalized the Mahayana tradition. And he had so many accomplished students. But in this period of time that had passed, Already, the general level of merit had decreased in the world. And therefore, it was more difficult. Students had to strive more to accomplish uh, uh, the final goal. But nevertheless, so many were achieving the final goal. Thereafter, the Buddha Dharma spread from northern India into Tibet by great masters such as Shankara Chita and late, later Tisha, and Many Tibetan uh, masters were born from their teachings. But nevertheless, as this period of time passed between when Buddha Shakyamuni was in the world to th that particular time, the amount of merit had decreased. And therefore, as we looked at la uh, last, last week, the five the generations, these became ever stronger due to the uh, uh, and this is an experience in terms of the length of time passing between when Buddha Shakyamuni was in the world and the growing in strength of afflictions and other obstacles. Mm -hmm. 
sungu che de de ni ma se de che za de ni ge sungu nyam len che ke ma lam den che hen de ge ma du che ne rin be rin ba che nu che sungu ne tu be ni ma nu pyur de de ne nu de ne da da ga zu do bo che ga zu do bi chigli ya gon je me be to ma bo la che za de ni ge san yu jim ne de gon bo zo sa de ni en pan du chup de la so ba da du chin ki jin la so ba da di cha sa che ge gon bo zo ne de ne ma ne che ge be ge la ma ne che ge sa ye ge yu ji su ma che be ke be on bo an che ri mu che la so ba on kon zo ma be de zo ye gon bo zo sa ta de ne za da da de ngan zo ga la de ni ge an gon je se de gon na je gon gon ko wa da ko sim jen tam je ko wa da un do wa de gon je de tarvalam tu la ne che ba che an tu ba po de ni ge che de ge ta na zo ya gon je me be ge de ni gon na je de pa ye ma ge san ye che me de gon bo lu zo la so pa de chu de la so pa da ke be un bo an je de mu che la so pa de ni ke be un gon je de ge sha sa da du se ne me ba sha so re se me ba sha re se gon je me be da zo wa mang bo la se de na zo de ni ge da da che che ge de ni da che le de bo ye ken de ni ye na ya la ma ti sono detto che ci sono cose che non sono cose che non sono cose che non sono cose In the first line, the son of the conqueror said, so the term son here refers to the teachings of the Buddha, the Dharma, the, the teachings of the Buddha, the Buddha Dharma. And, and sets, in this we can understand as uh, both uh, referring both to the passing of the Buddha from this world, as well as the times of the degeneration which followed his passing. So the, that, that sets, as well as because of the times, refers to this ongoing time of degeneration since then. Moving to the next line, which for us in English is the, uh, our third line, for the many migrators who lack a savior refuge. So here, now we can look at our present day, uh, the lamas that are present in this world, they are here as the representatives of, of, of Buddha Shakyamuni, for those beings bereft of merit, struggling in these de de degenerate times when the five de degenerations, which were mentioned last week, are so strong. And they have appeared in this world as a savior refuge, a refuge in that they protect beings from suffering, a savior or protector in being they are the person who does that. So the refuge is, is the uh, technique perhaps of protecting one from suffering and the savior or protector is the being enacting that. And that is the role they play. And they're doing it in a way that ordinary beings who have limited merit can relate to can perceive and interact with. <coughs> so this then is, um, and, and, and then yeah, for, for those who lack uh, a savior refuge, and for the many migrators. So through these many representatives in the world, they bring direct benefit to so many beings. Da And the two years, the sun is the same as the sun. So, that's the same as the sun. The sun is 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 the The founder teacher then has long since passed, but in the world his representatives, his emanations continue to appear in a way that ordinary beings can still relate to. Now going to, for us in the English, the second line, the third line of the Tibetan, you enact the deeds of a conqueror. So all these emanations are in our world enacting the deeds of Buddhas. 
enacting the enlightened activities of the body, speech, and mind of the Buddhas. This term, enlightened ac activities, we can understand as the work of the Buddha. The, what is the work of a Buddha, the job of a Buddha? To lead all sentient beings, to attain a state freed of suffering. That is the job, the role of a Buddha. And his representatives are engaging in the enlightening activities of the Buddha's body, speech, and mind, particularly that of speech, of teaching, the complete and unmistaken technique by which sentient beings, through enacting it, can eradicate suffering completely. When Buddha Shakyamuni was in the world, he was directly enacting the enlightened activities of the speech of a Buddha. He was presenting the complete and unmistaken Buddha Dharma to his students, teaching them the, not only the meaning, but the techniques for how to actualize it in their continuum. And due to the vast store of merit, so many beings did, becoming arhat, becoming Buddhas. But now, in our modern time, Buddha Shakyamuni is not present in the world, nor are any of the, the great pandits from, from ancient India, or the Tibetan lamas that have of such fame and renown from the four schools, such as Lama Tsongkhapa. But our spiritual teacher is in the world, and he is the representative, the emanation of Buddha Shakyamuni, enacting the enlightened activities of the Buddha, in particular that of speech, with the same, in the same way of teaching the complete un and unmistaken uh, 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 path and how to cultivate that path within oneself. In other words, our teacher, our protector, our refuge is not only presenting the, the Dharma in theory, but also guiding us in how to generate the Dharma within our minds, ensuring that we don't only ga gain intellectual uh, knowledge, but teaching us the techniques how to actualize what we have learned and give rise to, to transformation within us. So reflecting on, on the role of our spiritual teacher, we see that he is uh, our refuge in that he is, is teaching us how to gain freedom from suffering. He is our protector or our savior who is in, enacting the deeds or the enlightened activities of a conqueror. On <laughs> Nicole <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
just before I gave Gellar's commentary, within what he's just said, he's explaining these two words that we have as refuge and savior. So just to repeat what I said last week, uh, refuge can be, it's the same word as, as protect or protector, and the word we have as savior is also the wor a word for protector. So um, they both carry a similar connotation, but the word refuge, um, the, or rather the word savior, that is uh, specifically the being who is enacting the uh, function of refuge. And then the function of refuge or that protection is to, uh, for us to gain protection from suffering. So yes, re a refuge you can understand as protection, and saviour, we can understand as protector. So now to go to, to Gendler's um, commentary. So once our, 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 our Lama, our spiritual teacher, is teaching us the complete and unmistaken method to eradicate all faults, in other words, afflictions, together with their seeds and imprints, and to develop all good qualities, and thereby gain freedom from the sufferings of samsara, to attain a state that's liberated from suffering. So this, we need to recognize, recognize that our Lama is our refuge, is our protector. Our Lama is providing us with all the knowledge that is required, as well as the techniques to actualize that knowledge, and thereby gain freedom from all pain and all misery. So in this way, he is both our refuge and our saviour or protector. We understand that he's acting as our saviour or protector through leading us in how to develop the path, how to cultivate refuge within ourselves or protection from suffering within ourselves. So this we need to recognise as the qualities of our Lama. Uh Continuing then in the, with the fourth line, compassionate refuge savior, I make request to you. The compassion then here will naturally arise because we recognize that our teacher is manifesting in this world due to the power of his compassion, caring for us, going to great uh, e uh, effort tirelessly to work with us perfectly in accordance with our, 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 uh, our karmic backgrounds, and individual spiritual dispositions, leading us skillfully to attain a state freed from pain, freed from suffering. That's all I did say, the Lamalia, the Nigi, and the Dusu, the Jesha, said Lamigia, and the Lamigi Sosalia, the Nigi Captilia, just on a getting chimbushur, getting chimbushur, the Jambi Tone, that Delia, and Tabsi, and that's with all the verses in the section. The verse ends with, I make requests to you, I make supplications to you. Prior to making the request, as with the other verses, we open ourselves to our Lama. In the first three verses in the section was through recalling his qualities. Now in, in this section, with the, uh, the preceding verse and this verse, it's through recalling his great kindness. Here, the supplication or the request that we make is 
please bless me, or the, me the meaning of bless is inspire me to develop all the qualities of your body, your speech, and your mind. Inspire me to cultivate those within me. And that is the request that we are making. <laughs> Tavla <coughs> meaning, in brief then, of the supplication in this verse, is that we've recognized that there have been this, this constant stream of incredible beings in this world, from Buddha Shakyamuni through uh, India, and then the great pandits such as Nagarjuna in, in North India, and then throughout Tibet, great masters such as Lama Tsongkhapa and so many others, all of whom we lack the merit to be in their company of, to receive teachings from, guidance from, but somehow we've created the causes where we can receive teachings from their representative, from their emanation in this life. And we can, through his kindness and great endeavors, receive the complete and unmistaken teachings. We are not for abandoned. We have not forgotten. Recognizing how incredibly fortunate we are that with all these opportunities in previous times that we weren't able to make the most of. Now we have an opportunity. We must not let it go to waste. We must not lose this opportunity because there's no certainty what direction this life of ours will go in or what direction our next life will go in. Nor is there any certainty at all as to how easy or difficult it will be to reconnect with the path in our future lives. So now, whilst we have this opportunity, we must apply ourselves to the Dharma. Gumzen <laughs> So here I want to make a general point, which is a point which is a, a, a relevance both to this verse, 
and in general, which is, you can see from this explanation that reasons are presented why our Lama is so kind and previously all his qualities. And it's important to understand why reasons are pre presented. And they are presented so that we can use them in meditation to reflect on. And they, they are presented here as a starting point for you and your reflection to come up with ever more reasons. And this is indispensable for transforming our mind. Because mere, merely hearing a presentation and accepting it is unlikely to lead to a deep transformation. But taking a presentation and using it through reasons, thinking again and again, using reasons to establish something, that leads to a transformation in our thinking because it brings about a deep understanding, a certainty. So this is the case throughout the meditations that we have and will still cover. It's independent on reasoning that we deeply transform our mind. Here, we recognize, with the, here, the reason for recalling that the, the lineage of great beings is to re recognize that those are opportunities that we, we missed out on. And we do so to come to recognize how truly fortunate we are and what an incredibly precious opportunity we have so as not to let it go to waste. And in this way, we can take a life, especially where our mental activity is so taken up with things tied, bound to this one life, and rather make our mind far more broad and expansive, not be consumed by worldly affairs, but rather live a life of great meaning. Nothing is more meaningful than striving to abandon su the sufferings of samsara and attaining a state where we can be of real benefit to others. So this is why we reflect on the qualities and kindness of our lamas based on reasons. And the Dushin so repeat part of what I've just said because it's important that this is clear for both why explanations are given in the way that they are and for how to do your meditation. Rely on reasons. Rely on reasons. Because when we understand why something happens, conviction arises. When we understand why something happens, it has a deeper impact on us, a stable, <coughs> lasting impact on us. If we are just told to do something or not do something, easily we'll turn away from that. We may follow for a little while, but easily we'll turn away. So any faith that comes about that's not developed on reasons, but perhaps on emotion, it's not stable. It's not going to lead to any transformation. Whereas if we use reasons, we, we will come to understand the particular point in a deep way, a transformative way. And our faith or conviction in that will be stable. And then, for example, unwholesome friends, will not be able to distract us to things of no meaning, or even turn us away from cultivating the path within us. Because our faith or our conviction has come about in dependence on reasons. And then, I'm going to tell you, 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 I'm going to tell
And it's also quite possible one will have the thought, so I understand that I need to use reasonings, and it's relevant here and elsewhere to have a stable faith, but why do I actually need faith, stable faith in my spiritual teacher, in my Lama? Surely it's sufficient just to receive the teachings, study them and apply them. Why is faith required? Namalia, Dele The reason why we need stable faith in Alama, and remembering synonyms for faith in Buddhism will be a trust or conviction. So the reason we need to have stable conviction or trust in Alama is because what he is guiding us in is radical. It's radically different from the everyday way of thinking of the culture that we brought up in. And to transform our mind radically is possible. But to do so requires a strong determination, a strong determination to turn away from the habit patterns that have been holding us back, the habit patterns that are limiting our spiritual development. So to turn away from these habitual tendencies that keep pulling us in a particular direction, to turn away from those, we need strong conviction in Him because then we'll have conviction in his guidance. Having conviction in his guidance, or faith in his guidance, we will train precisely in accordance with his teachings, and we'll have the strength of mind, as well as the skill required to transform ourselves. So what we need to do through developing faith is we open our heart, we make our mind wide and expansive, then we have the strength of mind, the vigor, as well as the skill required to be able to turn away from harmful habit patterns and embrace new habits and strengthen those that we already have. And in this way, the radical transformation that we desire to become the person we want to be is achievable for all of us. Da Dumba Ah, 
Modern men are combined to a study divine, and then she combined to one me to a rural one. Don't you shoot chimbuchet? Don't you mean other chick and me to two other chick lara to call your cause of two watch drawers, Yelabna? Other serif shall do me a galakari to serve with Mictong Minnesota, and Modern men do galakari to set do me as a denichine, called Tony Dumba Mendelira. Tony Dumba shoot chimbuana, serif ne, draw to good, modern men are draw to good, and then a chick. Nimitsawayana <laughs> In the world, there are many incredible athletes who achieve great feats. We see them in the various sports on, on television, perhaps even you watch them in stadiums. And why have they managed to get so far, at, usually at a young age? And it's because of their determination. No matter the weather, they would have been training. No matter the uh, demands from, from family and friends, they would train. They didn't get to be peak athletes by being swayed by excuses and life's events. No matter what the conditions, no matter what the, the draw to other activities, they continued with their training. And they would have done so with joy, with a deep strength of mind and determination. And it's for that reason that these young people have achieved such greatness in their field. So it's that that we, as, as, uh, as spiritual aspirants, are trying to develop too. And the way to do so is to opening ourselves to our teacher, to develop strong and stable conviction in him and thereby in his teachings. Because it's through having ourselves open and receptive like that, that we will believe his assurances that we can transform ourselves in this life, we will then have the conviction, the strength of mind, knowing that it's possible. We will turn away from all the other distractions and, dis and delights and ensure that our mind at all times is on the Dharma. And in this way, transformation will come. <clears throat> And the day, 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 Kuranty so here and elsewhere we see this term um, or this expression, I make requests to you, or elsewhere, um, I make supplications to you. So this term then, it means we are um, making, it literally is um, planting a request. 
that's and the requests that we are planting seeds to give rise to are for all the qualities of our Lama to ripen within us, to arise within us. Particular, such as definite emergence, love, compassion, bodhicitta, the six perfections in particular, the wisdom realizing emptiness. And we, through opening ourselves, through cultivating faith or conviction and trust in our teacher, we open our, our mind, make ourselves receptive to him, then we make this request, we plant this seed for these realizations. And how is he to bestow them upon us? How is he to bless us, to give rise to these? It's through teaching and guiding. And in order for those teachings to penetrate and transform us, in order for his guidance to be taken up and applied, we need to open ourselves. And we open our, our heart, open our mind, through developing trust or faith in our teacher. Lamalia <laughs> Nyamnichi <laughs> Karin in the section then, we see that we first, in the first three verses, we recall the great qualities of a Lama. Now in this section of, of three verses, recalling his tremendous kindness. And with these six verses, with this entire section, it is so as to generate faith in him. And again, I want to repeat the reasons why faith is important, or the purpose of faith, remembering that faith is better translated in English as trust or conviction. And because it's important that you are all clear on this, because if one hears of, about, oh, it's important to have faith in one's Lama or Guru devotion, doubts and misunderstandings can arrive, a suspicion can arise, a distrust can arise, thinking, is this a bit like a cult? Is there something untoward here that I'm being told to generate faith in, in a person? Therefore, again, I will repeat the reasons why faith or trust or conviction is so important so that it is clear. And that is, it's through having conviction or trust in our, our teacher that we will, in his teachings, and we will come to see him. It's incredibly important in our life because it's through him that we can make this life transformational, truly meaningful. It's through having faith in our teacher that we can recognize this incredible opportunity we have that is so rare and so precious. And secondly, we have the strength of mind to apply ourselves, 
seeing that it's rare and precious, we will not want to let it go to waste. Whatever remains of this life, we will apply ourselves to cultivating the Dharma within us. And that is what is required to ensure that we gather knowledge and integrate that knowledge. We need a strength of mind, a determination to strive in those two tasks, gathering knowledge and integrating it. When we have a strength of mind, we will complete those two tasks or engage in those two tasks with ease, with joy, because we know how precious we are. this opportunity is, how fortunate we are to be here, to receive the teachings, to be at home and reflecting on them, to be engaging in our daily life and enacting them with others. We will, enter, we will engage in meditation regularly and with ease, regularly and with joy. We will be able not only to do so regularly and with ease, but we will do so precisely in accordance with his instructions, not just with the parts we enjoy more, but precisely in accordance with his instructions because of our faith in him, our trust in him. And thereby, we will readily come to see some change in our way of thinking, our change in, re in, in dealing with life's difficulties, our change in how we respond. And this will give us the confidence but that by continuing in this way, we ourselves can become bodhisattvas. It's not beyond us. And the attainment of Buddhahood, we will have confidence is coming ever nearer. And we will feel this transformation within us, and we will see the beneficial impact we have with others when we interact with them. So this is the purpose of faith. It opens us up and gives us a deep strength of mind conviction to apply ourselves to the Dharma. Uh-huh. Lamaya, Lamigi, Indian Samta, Lamaya, Dinchimu is Samta, Lamai, Ralia, Kitinchimu in Basamtana, then Chorting and Anticarium was in Lamaya, Gunjishi, Gunta with some Limare, Gunta with some Limare, Lamaya and Jensim Limare, Jensim, Jensim Limare, that Jensim, the Lamala Gunta with some Gunjishi, some of the Lamaya, Jimbig, Jensim, Liban, there's a new mobile. Just I think I'm the DJ would do my mother, Yapoyama, Mamma, the Dizukium. Just I didn't say Lamaya, Lamu, and the Lamaya, Dinchimber, Lamaya, Deva Chevaina, Deva Chevana, Lamala, Gun, Tavi, Gun, Lu Mikiava, Chicia, Lamaya, Jimbi, Jensim, Mikiava, that's also Naja Mikiavaja, or do Sene, and Yomo, but ye, and Maki, won't watch a gore, Chevrachik did it. someone who is a Dharma practitioner, they at all times are aware of their mind. In all situations, they take care of their mind. And whenever they notice an affliction arising, something that endangers, them, endangers themselves and others, they immediately counteract it by applying an antidote. And, but to be able to do this at all times, not just when one's quiet or in meditation, Depend comes about independence on having faith in one's Lama, because one will thereby have faith that we can develop the teachings within us. We'll have faith that this can be done through applying his teachings precisely, which means at all times we will rely on mindfulness and vigilance at all times, so in dependence on having faith in our teacher, we'll know what we can achieve. And to do so, we use mindfulness and vigilance. Vigilance will be aware that an affliction has, has arisen. Our motivation perhaps is tainted. And we'll be aware of this. And mindfulness 
will recall the dangers that the afflictions present, even slight ones. And mindfulness will also recall the, the, the antidote. And then we will apply it. And we'll do so readily at all times. And in this way, rapid transformation will come. On Dima said, No Lamigi and then Jambata, Lamigi, and then getting Chimota, Lamalia, Tiava, Cazio, Yubene, and Cedilla sometime, the Lamayane, and the Gia, the Lamis and the Chiane, and the Shuyagi, and the Jagore, and the Gire, Lamal Deva Sharada, Yundesera Matona, Lamadiane, the Gia, the Chiane, Shuyadi, the Chara Dumalig Marva, just on Lamis and the Deva, the Mayundin, the Baina. And the medicine of Chiane and the Shia, Lamayane and the Chia. Chiane and the Chia, the Chiane and the Shuba, the Sosalia, Gawa Marsa, and the Yarduva. And Dima said, Sechimano, Mahomba in there, Lama, I take Lama, Yahuchi, Nia, Nia, Lama Nia, and then Lamalia, and Deva, Deva Hawar de Gia, the Niki, Sonum Chagor, which is a Sedelina, and the Mahomba, and then the Chesa Dinaza, the Diniki, Lamalia. Cousin to you, Indian chair, Lama Tinchimber, Lama de Teva Kevana, Digi, Gumsel Masonda, Manzulia, Tesi Tonier, Dumbachia, and Yamleja, Yagir, Chicia, and Sedile, Sosuke, Lama Yatembe, Tensena, Chadota, and then Hajemeke, Gumsenije, the Sumbadi, and Sedile, Lama Yane, and the Chiata, Lames and the Chiane, and the Shio, Koharavata, Shije, the Nidin Yang Abane, a Momba in there, Kevach Momba in there, Lama Chiki, Yahun, Chiki, Nyata. Having faith in our teacher will mean that whenever we have an opportunity to receive teachings, We'll embrace those teachings. We'll take that opportunity. Not only that, but we'll ensure we do apply them to ourselves. We'll use the opportunity whilst receiving the teaching to hear, reflect, and put in mind what is, what is being heard. And outside of here, when we'll continue in our daily life to recall the teachings, to meditate on them too. For in lax faith, one will now take the opportunities that come our way and not only that, when we're going about our daily lives, our minds will ma- remain caught up in worldly affairs, distant from the teachings. Whereas if we do have faith, when we're going about our daily activities, our mind will stay on the Dharma topics. And in this way, we accumulate merit no matter what we're doing. And we purify no matter what we are doing. A further great benefit of having faith in our teacher is due to the strength of that Dharma connection. Those, that connection that we are, that Dharma connection we are creating, this will ripen from life to lifetime. And in our future lifetimes, we will reconnect again. And we'll be able to continue our spiritual development from lifetime to lifetime. So these are two further reasons that, firstly, again, just to repeat this, that through having faith in our teacher, we'll want to receive teachings. We'll clear our, our responsibilities where we can so that we can receive teachings and together with us we'll have the determination to apply them to ourselves. And that will cause us to turn away from worldly affairs, not have our mind caught up in, in the, the mundane activities of life, but keep our mind, no matter what we are doing, on the Dharma. And furthermore, this will lead to great purification and accumulation of merit and we'll make great efforts with ease in meditating and applying our meditations in daily life. And then lastly, again, just to keep repeating, this Dharma connection, this most precious of connections we are creating with our Lama, this will continue to serve us life to life. <laughs> So thank you. Then we'll um, conclude here for, for tonight and we'll continue with the next verse then next week. Then thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>